All right, <clears throat> let's check it out. Play it in full. We switch to two gorillas, and by we, I mean you. I didn't do anything. All right. Cool. I think once you get to here, I think it's okay. I think since we already have a traveling camera, so just as a quick thing, what I would add um, are just a couple of rocks here and things, and later on, if you can, like a little set, trees, whatever you have. But it will also help us in terms of um, just the travel of the camera. So once we get to here, this seems to be like a translate, pan and tilt, and in here, it looks like we're suddenly going this way, um, translate-wise. And then we go back here, that also looks like a translate. So what I would do, top view if those are your gorillas you can translate the camera for a while then i would just ease in and stop and then do the rest through just tilts pan and tilts meaning you translate till here and then once you're here i would just stop the camera all the translates you know in your graph come to a stop and then through here when they go this way don't translate the camera and but keep them you know framing wise to something that's more like that or something like this that might as well be centered. Um, but I would just reframe just through rotates. So if they go here, again, no translations, but rotate in Y so that they, he doesn't crowd that corner so much. He, that side of the back would be maybe here. But there's, there's a bit more that, because this starts to feel a bit uncomfortable where I'm not sure why we're needing this much space. This would work if suddenly something else would come in stomping or an explosion or something. And then here that's fine. And then the exit is fine. All right, that's just for staging. And I think generally the idea works. You're just gonna have to really look at the reference in terms of uh, weight transfers and the speed of it especially through something like this. So once you get to here, and I'm looking at this one, sorry. So as you have this, when you start taking those those steps, right? And I know this is an early pass and it's rough, but that's when you're going to have to look at the reference of how does this massive creature handle a jump back and a compression? Or once you get to here, you can see how nothing is moving in the hips, the chest, that arm those locked moments you're gonna have to work on or moments like here when both arms kind of go up with the chest at the same time. So those are all the refinement passes you're gonna have to uh, get into. Even on something like this, after he does a uh, bam sideways slap, like that force is gonna impact him a bit more. There will be some shake in there. And then this drop down here is almost a bit slow. It's not too bad actually. It just suddenly seems almost too relaxed. So by slow, I meant it's more like, Pah! and then it's, huh, okay. You know what I mean? It's just, there's something where, and I'm asking you mean, and it's not live. You can't answer me. It's always so silly. But after this massive confrontation and slap, this drop, and then one, two, just starts to feel almost casual versus, Pah! like a stronger drop, and then, Bow, bow, like maybe a faster, stronger, uh, a more tense move forward and then mouth open and rrr, like a roar. So so you can start deviating from the reference and get a bit more uh, confrontational and a bit more creature reacting at this point here. Then on stuff like this, when you have arms that are somewhat bent, right? I don't think that, what is this? One frame of a push up this way is enough to bring that gorilla all the way up here. So you're gonna have to play a little bit more with a drop and anticipation. Maybe he leads with the head up as well, but you wanna make sure that those mechanics and the weight works in something like this. And then especially something like that, where this feels like the gorilla is on wires and it's being pulled up and then kind of drops. It's not clear if this is a push off that sense the gorilla over here but then it would be initiated through here right because that impact seems to be bam here so then it would have a rotation back with less of a of a lift this is really high 
if you want to jump, then you're going to have to show that there's a bit more of a compression and a jump off. You know, it's still not probably as high. And that is also a bit soft, that landing, especially with here. It feels like you're easing in almost with that hands. Same thing with here, eases in. So I would just kind of look and push the reference. Uh, in moments like this, I would tweak it where maybe that leg would be further out with a little foot roll. So you have, um, you know, you have a, a bit of a cleaner silhouette, even if it's cheated. So you have nicer negative space, you know, so it's not so overlappy here. And then like this is a bit unfortunate with a shape like this and they're very twins poses. Just that, that step out just feels uh, slightly weird. And then you got the upper body all connected as one rotating. And I know this is rough. I'm just pointing out the things that I would look at as you continue on. Stuff like here, when this one gets hit, boom, feels like you have a fast move away from us, right? Which makes sense because that's the force that pushes that one over there. But then after this, you can see how you have that rotation in the root over there and it stops. And then it suddenly just translates down. So as you initiate a move over here, it has to continue with that momentum and slowly recover. And how is that going to work? So is it going to be more of a sidestep? Because that just feels mechanically a bit impossible to have such a quick move and then suddenly it stops and there's no recovery. There's no bigger change of uh, direction that's initiated through maybe this step for balance. And then moving over this way is the same thing. You move towards us, towards the camera. And then it just suddenly stops. So that sudden stop of momentum and movement is always a bit weird. Loses the weight. He's really off balance here. And it takes too long to for that step there to regain the balance. So there's just a little bit of some, some issues of weight uh, here and there. Same thing on that. Bam, on this. Having the head here. Hey, that head is a bit too IK because the rotation is the same. This this there's no rotational change it just seems like the chest goes back and there is like a, a head align or head ik function on on this rig so that just feels a bit disjointed but overall it feels like the momentum is initiated to go back this way but then suddenly it stops and it's just a quick translate forward and it doesn't quite work physically because technically the way you know if it's right over this leg there's no way he can advance so quickly that leg would have to be, you know, a bit further back so that there is a force that can push this way. Right now, it's so much straight on that that amount of speed doesn't quite work. There would have to be more leaning forward, maybe a swing up, and then the leg has to be further back to get that directional force there. All right. So that's the stuff I would look at. Uh, but it's cool. It's cool to see. And again, I would add uh, some background pieces so we can understand the camera moves a bit better. It's always tricky when the surface is just one color. Uh, and then, like I said before, once you get to here, ease into the stop of the camera, translate, and then don't move and then just keep it all under um, rotations. And then I can do a pass once we're closer on the stage and everything, if you want, on a handheld camera. Uh, and I can show you how that would liven up the whole thing a bit more and give it a bit more of a realistic feel. All right, that's it. Thank you. All right, there's an email. You can sign up, you can start whenever you want, you can submit whenever you want, you get 16 submissions. Either way, a like and subscribe would be awesome. All right, thank you.